welcome back to the Baggies podcast YouTube channel where of course we're giving you all the latest news, views and opinions on all things Albion. We're back again today with another match day vlog for West Bromwich Albion versus Cardiff which kicks off at 2 o'clock today um, at the Hawthorns. So looking forward to this one, another big game for Albion, hoping to, to bounce back after a disappointing defeat against Derby County away from home. Yeah, we've not been in the best of form of late, but hoping that we can pick it up. Obviously, the, the players may be spurred on by the, the signing of Daryl DK, who joined the club on a permanent deal uh, on a four and a half year contract as well uh, just yesterday. So hopefully he's going to be in attendance today. He's going to be in the stands. So we'll see if we can look out for him. But yeah, looking forward to this one. It's going to be a big game. Not got a fantastic record against Cardiff, but beat them 4-0 earlier on in the season. So yeah, I feel like we can potentially pick up a victory today, but obviously I said that against uh, Derby for, for the game against Derby County and we, we played terribly in that one. So yeah, if you're new around here for this match day vlog, make sure you subscribe, make sure you drop your comments on the game below. Uh, if you're new around here, please do click the subscribe button. It'll be uh, amazing. We've made uh, quite a few subscriptions over the past few days because uh, of the, the new signing videos that we put out. But yeah, make sure you're sticking around to the end of this match day vlog to see all the atmosphere and the clips from the game. So let's get straight into it. In place here at the Hawthorns for West Bromwich Albion versus Cardiff City. A few changes to Valerian Ishmael's lineup for this one from the Derby game. Tom Fellows and Taylor Gardner Hickman both come into the side. Uh, Tom Fellows, of course, making his uh, his league debut uh, earlier on in the season and now getting his first league start. Uh, Taylor Gardner Hickman, of course, doing so well already and, and having received that four and a half year contract, it's really nice to see. Uh, him getting a start ahead of Darnell Furlong in this one. Tom Fellows coming in for Grady D and Garner. Then we've got uh, Colin Grant who recorded a positive lateral flow test which turned out to not be COVID. Uh, comes back into the side in the left wing position in place of Adam Reach. Then you've got Alex Mowat who comes back in who did actually have COVID uh, from the same testing as, as Colin Grant but comes in and, uh, and, and will play uh, in the central midfield alongside Jake Livermore. The lineup is Johnston, Bartley, uh, Clark, Kipre, Tony Legarna, Hickman, Mowat, Livermore uh, with Townsend at left wing back, and a front three of Fellows, Robinson, and Carlan Grant. Looking forward to this one at the Hawthorns. Daryl DK is going to be announced and unveiled at half time, so looking forward to getting some clips of that. Uh, and yeah, hoping to see him in, uh, at the Hawthorns for the first time. But yeah, looking forward to this one here, West Bromwich Albion versus Cardiff.
there we are then guys back from the game now awful awful again this is kind of my initial if you're new, new to the channel i know we've had quite a few different subscribers coming in from the from the dk video but you know th this is like a bit of an instant match reaction for me i've literally just got through the door i'm absolutely appalled by that performance i think to start with i think we have to before we get into any of the external factors the performance was still not good enough i think you know yes i think you should have yeah, I think you you probably could have put away a couple of chances that you had, um, but you know the performance was still not good enough. When you've had men sent off, you, you, you and still attempt to cobble in a three at the back with four in midfield, and you know despite the fact you should really be, even though that you had ten wet ten men, you were still better than them. So why didn't you have a go and and try and push forward for a win? I was I was pretty appalled by the performance for a start the refereeing decisions were awful be it's not the referee's fault that that the offside for our goal wasn't given it was offside probably about five yards which is quite worrying that the linesman didn't see that but obviously referee can't really give that if the linesman has a linesman if he has to trust his linesman on that one so you can't really blame the ref in particular for that but the referee just let the game get out of control all the way through there were fouls just not being given letting too much go blown for the wrong things um, Moet's tackle from I, I was on the other side of the ground as you saw from the footage I, I didn't quite see it uh, very clearly but yeah from from what I've seen it from what for clips from little clips I've seen I didn't quite see it live is what I'm trying to say from the clips I've seen it's definitely a red rash uh, going nowhere for starters um, uh, for for Volk and you, know, you know Volks was going absolutely nowhere just go literally running the ball into touch and he's 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 chopped him down like that it's just unnecessary completely out of order. There's clearly a little bit of a discipline issue, I think, in this in this squad at the moment. We surely should be winning the red card uh, league table at the moment, if anything. I mean, refereeing decisions, penalty at the end there. Uh, as I said, uh, if if I have to be honest, there was a lot of arguing in the stands, lots of lots of bickering, lots of lots of tempers flared between the home fans as well. So I, I decided to to leave with about five five minutes to go, so I didn't see the penalty incident or what happened after the game either. So yeah, I thought that. I thought that for starters, the, the the penalty that I've seen on Twitter, the video, I think was a penalty. I think that's dis disgraceful how the referee doesn't give that. But then again, I suppose you can count yourself a little bit fortunate with the fact that you've got a goal in the first place. I mean, you know, you've you've got you've got the goal, but fair enough, you could you could have had a, another one really. But yeah, just a really poor, poor performance, poor referee, and just letting tempers boil over, just letting things could almost playing a bit more of a laissez-faire approach, which is just not the way you manage a game like that, where two sides want to be physical, two sides want to battle on the pitch. Uh, and, you know, for me, the ref let, let a lot of players, including ours and including Cardiff players, get away with quite a lot. Time wasting, tackles flying in everywhere. I think he just let them get away, let, let everybody get away with a bit too much than he should have, which allowed the tempers to be flared. And that came to what that boiled down to what happened at the end of the game. Ishmael rushing onto the pitch to, to you know, have a go to confront the referee and having to be dragged away by his captain, Jake Livermore. I'd like to say something about Livermore. I may get pelters for this. I thought he was actually really good today. I mean... Yeah, yes, his passing range is never never going to be good, but for me, he played like a captain today, and his actions off the pitch uh, after the game certainly showed that he's got the captain's mentality. He came in, uh, the fact that he's telling his manager to stand stand away from you know stop stop trying to you know fight the referee is is a bit out of order. I like the passion from Val. I rate that he cares. It shows that he really does care about this this cause, and I, I like to see passion. But when you're acting like that. I feel like it just shows that um, it just it gives the players the wrong message. It sparks off a little bit of a well, our managers get it up in the referee's face. Where, why can't we? And that's probably what happened with Johnston. I mean, I didn't see Johnston's incident. I haven't managed to get a clip on Twitter or anything like that. So if you if you if you saw it, please uh, feel free to elaborate on, on my thoughts in the comments. Apparently, Johnston's had flint in a bit of a headlock or something along those lines. In that case, I suppose that's a red card. But from like some still images I've seen, it looks nothing more than than, than a bit of handbags for me. Um, the referee, as I said, didn't stamp down on a lot during the game and stamped down on you know quite a few of the wrong things, leading to tempers being flared. You know, it just living proof again that Championship referees are incapable of controlling a match. You know, there's several diff difficult decisions, but I won't let that distract from the fact that it was a really poor performance from Albion, and I'm really disappointed with the way that. Um, we played uh and you know nice to see dk at half time seemed very happy to be here i'm not quite sure why at the moment to be honest i was really optimistic about the signing but i watched that and then i think do us does a striker solve it 
and then I think actually probably not. I feel like there may be more to this. There are a few chances in there that you probably would you you would create a bit more with DK up front. You know his strength, his power, his pace could help you get in on goal quite 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 a lot more often. And then obviously flicking balls on and and grabbing goals in the in centre of the area possibly. Yeah, yeah, maybe he does grab you grab you some more goals and perhaps digs you out of holes that uh, you've you've dug yourself by playing badly like today. But you know, realistically, is he going to get a lot of service from from what I saw today? Maybe not, and that's it's quite annoying. But I, you know, I, I'm not. I feel like you know he seemed a little too. It's nice to see him happy at the at half time, but you know, maybe it, it, he may find himself with a lot of expectation, and I hope that's not too much for him. But yeah, those are my thoughts. Poor performance, poor refereeing for on both sides. You know, I'm not going to. I am wearing an Albion shirt, but I'm. Try not to be as try not to be too biased because you know there were refereeing decisions that went against both sides today and officiating decisions that went against both sides today. But overall, the ref failed to keep any control of the game. We're, with thoughts on Ishmael, I feel like I like the passion, like that he cares, but he has to show more control. And he has to keep his head. And same with Sam Johnson, I feel like that's his last game for us. I, I wouldn't be, uh, you know, if it means we get some money for him, I, I wouldn't be. Uh, in the end, wouldn't 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 be opposed to seeing him go for for some money if we can get to get some money for him. So yeah, not the end of the world really. We have got we got other goalkeepers, but yeah, I feel like that's his last appearance for us, and it's a shame that it's ended that way with with such a great season that that he had last year, which is which is a real shame. But those are my thoughts on the game. Drop yours down below. Um, I'm I, I I personally didn't enjoy it at all, mainly because of the arguing, the bickering around me in the in the stands. It just took away from the the game really. I'd, I'd have liked to at least try to enjoy it without, you know, scuffles and whatnot going on around me. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the match day vlog. Looking forward to seeing DK in an Albion shirt very soon. Make sure you subscribe, drop your comments, drop your likes down, and I'll see you in the next match day vlog. See you later. Goodbye.